Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to talk to you about five deck hacks, five things that I do to make things quicker, easier, or more accurate. So if you get something out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time there's a bee running around my head. Also, if you want to be notified every time we're putting out fresh content. And if you'd like to learn how to bend deck boards, don't forget to go visit Dr. Dex Masterclass. Okay, so a lot of this video has to do with some preliminary parts of when you start building a deck. A lot of these uh, tricks or tips that I have are about squaring things up, keeping things level. How do you do that? What's the fastest way to do it? Uh, my first one is old school. A lot of you have heard of it. It's called a three, four, five. And what it does is it allows you to take two measurements and then figure out a square point between those two measurements. All right, so here's, here's how it works. So you've got your, we're just gonna use a piece of plywood as our sample, okay? Because we already know it's square, so it's just gonna prove my point. So if you take a measurement at three feet from the corner of a house, let's say, mark it at three feet, and then you take another measurement from the same corner, and you go four feet from there, between those two measurements, that distance should equal five feet. Let's see if it works. Okay, here's my three foot measurement. I'm gonna put my tape measure right on three feet. I'm gonna pull it over to my four foot point right here. And if I'm, if I'm laid out perfectly, that will give me five feet in between those two points. That is a square. That is 90 degrees square, okay? So that's one way that we do quick checks. So you can multiply that and make a bigger square if you want. So instead of a three, four, five, you could do a six, eight, 10, or even a nine, 12, 15, if you're trying to square up a large area uh, and you just wanna know that you're close or if you're being on point. All right, so another way we do that is we have these large fold-out squares. Like here's a standard speed square, right? But another way we do that is we can take a fold-out square, pull it out and it locks, and it basically does the same thing. It will give you a reference of squareness. So if I pull this square right up against the side of this plywood, and I pull it to the edge, it's square. If I have a straight piece of 20-foot lumber, I can put this up against my foundation of my house, put this out here, run my straight board right next to it, square it up. I can check it with a three, four, five, or a six, eight, 10. And I'm gonna have a square point off the foundation of the house. So I know where my beams can go. I know where my footings need to go. Uh, it's all about layout, okay? So this is a shortcut. I use this layout square all the time. As a matter of fact, I use it so much, I actually have two of them, uh, which I sometimes use uh, both at the same time. This one is made by Stanley. This one is made by a company called A-Square. I don't even know if this one's made anymore. This one, it does come loose a little bit right here sometimes, if, if you're not careful, because it's spring-loaded. You can see right there, I just did it. So you gotta make sure that that point stays locked in just like that because there's a spring on the back. And if that spring gets knocked, it can knock the square out of square. But it does exactly the same thing as this square. You hold it up against a straight edge and it's nice and square, it's right and square, except it's a different configuration. The Stanley square is like an equal distance from here to here to here. This one's similar to a three, four, five technique, but it's in a shorter distance. The cool thing about these is that they fold up and they don't take up a lot of storage in your space. Another cool tool that I have in my arsenal is a Stabila angle finder. This is number two on my list. This is a really cool tool. I found this at a trade show. I think it was at JLC Live. And what's cool about this tool is regardless of whatever angle you need to find, it's a digital protractor. So it tells you what you need to know, what angle you're at, wherever it is. And if you need the half point of that, you hit this button right here and it'll tell you the exact half point of whatever that angle is, which comes in handy when you're doing miters. So you can use this on a, on a layout. Let's just say you have some funky angle 
Here's 40 degrees right here. Another cool thing, you can lock this thing in place and not lose your angle. And then there it is. So, but if I didn't know what my angle was, I could always come back and say, okay, I need, I need to know what this angle is right here that's drawn up. I can just put this on here, lay it down, I'm at 40 degrees. It says 40.1. But now let's go over to the staircase. I'm gonna show you what I really like to use this for. When I'm framing stairs and I'm running trim, like the side trim on the staircase, and it comes up and it meets a point somewhere up here where something's vertical or level, and I need to know what angle is my staircase at. That's what I like to use this for. So what I'll do, I'll put the protractor on the leading edge of the stairs, and then I'll run this Stabila level, because there's a, there's a spirit bubble right here. And once that's level, then I'll know that I'm at 39.8 degrees from here to here. So that helps me figure out what the angle is up there that I need to cut my trim board at. So that is a really handy tool. And that's why I bought this, was mostly just for figuring out staircases. So that's my number two deck hack that I really like to use to speed things up when I'm trying to figure out angles on staircases. All right, the third hack I have for you is about string. We all use it. There's a couple different ways to tie string, but I'm just gonna show you a real quick way that I found that uh, it works really well. I oh, grabbed the wrong size uh, bit. But I just happen to have a Cortex bit. I need a T20, not a T25. So now we're back in business. You can just leave that in there, Cal. So let's just say you're um, you're trying to choose a straight line. Are you kidding me? This thing just died. What are the odds? What are the odds I get one screw in? I don't believe it. it must be Monday. All right, so I got my drill. <laughs> So let's just say you, you just have two points. You wanna run your string. There's a ton of string tricks on, on YouTube. There's guys with a million views. Here's the idea. The whole idea is about how to tie the knot, right? How to tie the knot on the string and keep it tight and make it quick to get released. All right, so what you do is you, you loop around your finger about four or five times. You hook it around the other point that you're trying to straight your string line to, and then you pull like this, and then pull it back, and it keeps it tight. It keeps tension on the string. Okay, this works better when you have a lot a longer distance because there's a little more slack in the string, so you can actually get some really good tension on it. And then when you're done. Instead of tying a knot that you're trying to pick out, all you gotta do is pull on it. And it comes right off. Not a bad trick, huh? I've talked to quite a few guys in my industry that use this trick. It's really not that hard. But you gotta remember to pull on the opposing string, you can kinda hear it tighten up and you just gotta pull back again on it. I just wrap it around once or twice like that. Now it's snug. So that, that string will stay snug and tight for you for as long as you need it to. And then when you're done, you just unwind it, pull back on it, it comes right off. All right, so one hack I use a lot. This is number four. It's on my phone. It's actually a construction calculator. So I'm gonna bring you over here. I'm gonna show you what I use it for and how, and I paid $25 for this app and I think it's worth every penny. And the one thing I use it for more than anything else is to figure out when I'm laying out my framing, my joists, because I, I don't lay out 16, 16, 16, 12. I lay out everything at 13 and 5 8, 13, whatever, whatever it takes. Everything for me, I lay out perfect. So every joist has the same layout for the whole deck. All right, so this program is called CM Pro Calc, Construction Master Pro. This has a lot of features and functions that I don't use, but the one thing I do use, let's just say we're doing um, 14 and 3 8 inch, 14 inch and 3 8 spacing on center. And I wanna add 14 inch 
and three eighths to it, that's 28 and three quarters. And then if I need to add it again, I just hit equals and it adds another 14 and three eighths and so on and so forth until I get to my final destination. Let's say you're building a 12 foot deck and you just made it 143 and three quarters. You cut it real tight. So you can also subtract 14 inches and three eighths is 120. So you can go backwards, same concept Take you back to 14 and 3 eighths. That's mostly what I use this construction calculator for. It has so many more features than that, but basically uh, it was worth the 25 bucks just so I can do monster run. When I'm doing monster layouts over 20, 30 feet, and I want to lay out all my joists perfectly, you can go back on my Instagram feed and see it. See how uh, from a drone shot and see how equal everything is. And that's uh, my number four construction hack for you. All right, so my fifth and final hack for you, it's a very simple one as well, but it's just all about finding quick angles. Uh, you have a square, you have a pivot point on your square. This is called a pivot right here, pivot point. Even says it right here, pivot. There's many different brands of squares. They all should have it. This one has it as well, right here. Pivot, that's your pivot point, okay? So you take your pivot point, and let's just say you know you need a 35 degree angle. You go from your pivot point, there's degrees. See, D-E-G right here, that stands for degrees, all along this square. If I need a 35 degree angle, I go from my pivot point, and you gotta have this, this has to be a straight edge. This is very helpful if it is. You go to 35 on here, there's your mark. Whoops. That's 35 degrees. So if y'all wanna double check that, I just go to my pivot point, and I put it up right onto this pencil line. I go down here and it says 35. You can do up to an 89 degree angle if you need to, um, all the way to one. I've had a lot of carpenters that I've worked with in the past that didn't know how to find a simple angle on a speed square. It's not hard. It's just knowing how to do that. So basically you could say, you could throw me out any, Calvin, give me a number between one and 60. 37. Okay, so I go, here's 35. I gotta go two clicks past that, 36, 37. There's my 37 degree angle. It's that simple. And that's a quick hack. That's something that you need to know. This square will as well, uh, has a bubble vial in it. So you can use this to figure out your staircase angles. If you have a, a pitch, going like this and you find level on the bubble and you can read it 38 degrees if you look through from the pivot point down to the degree 38 so that's how you do that really cool really quick really easy to learn all right guys that's all I got for you today but I hope you enjoyed the five uh, deck hacks if you did, please click that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we put out fresh content. And don't forget to go check out Dr. Dex Masterclass, learn how to bend deck boards like me. All right, have a great day.